Learning Science Outside of the Classroom for Sustainable Future Utter Lab Implementation in Finland Utter is an EU-funded project that aims to spark young people's interest in science and environmental sustainability with the help of education outside the classroom tools and methodologies. The overall aim of the Utter project is to investigate if education outside the classroom methods and pedagogies impact the acquisition of scientific knowledge and 21st century skills in students. Utter Lab is best described as student-centered, hands-on activity aiming to promote sustainable development through education outside the classroom. Utter Lab consists of five different steps. Prepare, orientate, discover, make an impact, reflect. Utter Lab offers teachers a flexible approach with pedagogical underpinnings to build a well thought educational education outside the classroom activity to suit different classes and curricula. Next, we will tell you more about the five steps of the Utter Lab and the Utter Lab pilot in Finland. The first step in Utter Lab is prepare. Preparing for an Utter Lab means getting ready for the actual activities and preparing what is needed. The prepare step includes setting specific objectives for an Utter Lab. Learning objectives need to be derived from and be aligned with the curriculum. In addition, the prepare step includes choosing an EOC activity and a place. What kind of EOC activity would give possibilities to achieve the defined learning objectives? The prepare step can also be implemented in a way that emphasizes students' involvement and participation. Students can be involved when deciding what kind of EOC activity and location would be the best to achieve the learning objectives. This is an example of the Otto Lab implemented in Finland. The students in this example are third graders, i.e. 9 to 10 years old. The theme of the Otto Lab was reuse, the reduction and recycling of the plastic waste. The main objective of the Otter Lab was to investigate plastic waste in students' nearby environment. First, the students brought their household plastic waste to the school. They also collected plastic waste from their neighborhood. They studied the collected garbage and gathered information about plastic waste, its impact on nature and possibilities to recycle it. In addition, the students explored possibilities to use plastic waste to completely new purposes. Finally, they wanted to raise awareness about plastic waste in their community. The Otto Lab aims for broad learning goals. The Otto Lab supports acquiring of scientific knowledge in the field of environmental sustainability and global environmental challenges. Learning goals are linked to United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Moreover, the Otto Lab facilitates the development of students' 21st century skills. In addition, the Otto Lab promotes an inclusive attitude, embracing diversity and participation of all students. The teachers in the Finnish pilot school set the following objectives for their Otto Lab. Sustainable cities and communities, creativity and innovation, communication, collaboration, ICT literacy, personal and social responsibility, interacting considerately. This author lab consisted of several EOC activities. The students collected carpets in nearby neighborhood. The students brought their household waste to school. 
The students organized the waste collector in the school hallway. The students built and tested tools and other inventions made from collected carpets outdoors in the schoolyard. The students made questions for Seppo app about local environment, recycling and sorting. Seppo gamified learning app was used outdoors. The students organized an outdoor exhibition about the tool posters. Two pilot school teachers joined their forces and planned and implemented the Otto Lab together. The teachers delivered almost all lessons together, co-teaching two classes together. They also integrated several subjects to the Otto Lab. They used environmental science lessons for Otto Lab, but included also Finnish language lessons to do the reporting work of the lab. The Seppo app gamified learning application was used during the PA lesson. The second step in Otter Lab is Orientate. During this step, students start working with a defined topic. Students understand importance of the chosen environmental topic or issue. They get information about upcoming EOC activity and the whole learning process. Teacher helps them map their prior knowledge about the topic. Students gather relevant prior information for the EOC activity. And they set learning tasks or research questions for the EOC activity. This pre-learning, which takes place during the orientate step, is an important part of the learning process. Pre-learning activates students' prior knowledge and helps them to make right connections between new knowledge acquired during the EOC activity and pre-existing notions. This way, the new information is easier to understand and it becomes relevant to the students. In the Otter Lab pilot in Finland, during the orientation step, the students watch YouTube videos and discuss about recycling and sorting waste. As a part of the orientation, teacher also shared information about implementation of the Otter Lab and the whole process. In addition, the teachers had prepared learning diary template with basic information, multiple different questions and tasks to support the whole Otter Lab process. Students filled in the learning diary themselves and continued completing the learning diary during the whole author lab. The students wrote a project plan in their learning diary with their own notes. They had common basis for the project, a connect map to which they first filled in their existing knowledge. The students gathered relevant information for their EOC activity. They identified different kind of waste. They filled in the table in their diary and made a list about fast plastics and slow plastics and discussed their findings with a pair. The outcomes of the orientation step were awareness of sorting waste, understanding of using plastic, origin and amount of plastic, and reducing the waste by making own design of a tool or other invention. During the discover step in the auto lab, the actual EOC activity will be carried out. Students will visit a chosen location and engage in an EOC activity determined in the beginning of the other lab. This step has two main tasks. The first one is getting students engaged in real-life activities. Peer collaboration is essential. Students can work in pairs or in small groups. The second task is giving students opportunities to observe and gather data. Collecting data can be done by observation, taking notes, answering predetermined questions, taking photos or videos, interviewing experts, etc. 
the Discover step is all about students experiencing things themselves. Authentic, hands-on activities and environments enable real experiences to occur. Teacher facilitates the learning during the EOC activity. It is vital to let the student experience and explore things themselves, but the teacher is there to help if needed. In the other lab, in Finland, the Discover step included studying outside the classroom and inside the classroom alternately. That means that after the EOC activity, the students continued working in the classroom, which was followed by a new EOC activity, etc. The Discover step consisted of several different EOC activities. The students brought their household plastic waste to the school, collected garbage from nearby nature, and organized a waste collector in the school's hallway. The students investigated together the cadet plastic waste in their classroom. The students planned what kind of recycle tools could be made out of the plastic. The purpose of the tool was to pick up trash from the tree or from a difficult locations. Other kinds of inventions were also allowed. The student built their tools and tested them in the schoolyard and nearby forest. Next, you will see two videos of how the students started building the tools from plastic waste. Mikäs tästä on tulossa? Lintujen ruokinta. Ja tähän tulee vielä vettä. Lintujen ruokinta-automaatti. Mä en tiedä, onko linnut vettä. Kyllä, ne juo aika paljonkin vettä. Tämä on semmoinen korkea, että tähän pistää siihen puun tällä ja sitten linnut voi tulla sieltä syömään juo. Niin tää laitetaan silleen näin. Onpa hieno. Se on vähän silleen modernempi linnun ruokintapaikka, eikä linnut sellainen puu. Tosi hyvä. The student presented the tools they built to each other and the other third grade class that didn't participate in the other lab. They discussed together which elements of the tools were most functional. Seppo is an application for game-based learning. The Seppo game motivates students to learn by transforming their school assignments into a game. The students made questions for Seppo game about local environment, recycling and sorting. Seppo was used in small groups outdoors to strengthen what was learned. Seppo game produced learning data for every group and teachers. GPS location-based map works as an outdoor game board. While playing the Seppo game, the students moved outdoors, interacted with each other, and tried to solve questions together. The students considered the Seppo game as a meaningful way to learn and work together. After the EEOC activity or activities in the other lab, it is time to analyze what new is learned and what could be done based on this new knowledge. Students analyze their observations and collect the data. They share information with each other and summarize their learning. During Make an Impact step, students also design youth initiative, a hands-on project to address real environmental problems. Students draw conclusions what could they do to have an impact in these environmental issues? They come up with ideas and develop proposals for solutions. They can collaboratively decide which ones or ones of the solutions they want to actually implement. According to the age of the students, 
they can propose different initiatives on different levels. Home, classroom, school, community and social level. Students make concrete plan how they will implement their initiative. Concrete plans can be made in small groups. Students implement the youth initiative they have designed and evaluate how it works. The youth initiative can take a form of an exhibition for parents, teachers and other students. Posters about the importance of the topic, a newsletter, an initiative to the municipal or county council or a video, a blog post or other social media content, etc. In the other lab pilot in Finland, the students analyzed the collected data. They studied the collected waste and reviewed the results of the SEPA game. They had discussions about the results and they made self-assessment. The students decided to make informative posters as a youth initiative. The students did the posters of the tools they built and included information about plastic, recycling and reusing. The student planned their posters and gathered information from them on internet. For example, how many tons of plastics end up in a landfill every year? Why plastic waste has to be reduced? How many hangers are thrown away every year? How plastic can be reused? With the posters, the students wanted to wake up people to notice the amount of plastic waste and that plastic can be reused. The students decided where they wanted to hang and showcase their posters. In neighborhood nearby, in the local grocery store, around the school premises. The pictures of the posters were also published in school's Instagram account. The posters were about the tools that the student had built. They consisted of information about plastic waste and its reuse. In many posters, the students instructed that plastic waste should be reduced and that nature should not be littered. The last step of Otter Lab is reflection. Reflection is an important part of learning. Reflection is thinking about and analyzing one's own learning. Reflection develops creativity, ability to think critically about information and ideas, and metacognitive skills. Students reflect what they have learned through the Otto Lab, how did the process proceed, and how did the learning take place. In the Otto Lab pilot in Finland, the students wrote learning diary throughout the auto lab process. They also discussed and reflected on together and with the teachers what they had learned and what kind of questions they still had.